Hello, Beatball World. Welcome back to the Beatball Blue Show. Normally I come out and say how excited I am to be having this episode. But I wouldn't say I'm excited. I am. Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be a good show. I think it's, we're going to have a conversation that needs to be had. But uh, that, that's what this show is going to be, more of a conversation than, uh, than uh, what, what we're normally used to on the show. I feel like I am flying blind. I have no notes. Normally, I have my notes all in front of me. But again, I'm not interviewing anybody. I, uh, I got a nice little panel here together. We're going to have a conversation, a COVID conversation. I, I don't know. So I, we'll just go from there. I am your captain, <laughs> Neil D A W G. I am joined by my man at the other end of my darkness, Seth Bam Bam Clark. Welcome back, Seth. No greetings, Neil Dog. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Always. You always come in so quietly. Like bring in um, Seth Bam Bam Clark. You're like, oh, it's so nice to be back. Yeah, uh, you know, I come in. You know, I like I like to build to a crescendo. You know, <laughs> I like to come in smooth yeah. and stuff like that. Start I, I show up. my start. Show, out I don't want to show my cards right out, out of the gate. You know start I mean? out all quiet and calm, and then come in with the head slapped. Oh, I kid, cause I love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That is what I'm here for, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are also joined by Darnell Booker from the Indie Thunder. Welcome back to the show, Darnell. How are you doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, Neil? What's up, Seth? What's up, Bam? You guys doing all right? Darnell. Darnell. Yeah. We are hanging this book second time on the show. Also, for the second time on the show, from the San Antonio Jets, my man, D. Smith, David Smith. Welcome back, David. Thank you, Neil. What's going on? Ah, uh, just chilling, just chilling. I appreciate you fellas taking time to come on here and uh, join Seth and I in this conversation. I guess I want uh, to, to give the audience just kind of a little overview of where we're going with this. Um, you know, starting when the show started, I never wanted to ever have any COVID conversation because this thing really started out as just it was going to be a short term thing I was doing, you know, loving up people for a while while everybody was on lockdown, nobody was doing anything. But, you know, I mean, even though the, the, the virus hasn't gone away, we're still dealing with COVID-19. Uh, the show's kept on rolling, and I, I plan to keep it on rolling. So I guess, and, and I started out never wanting to talk about the virus because I, I was doing it as kind of a break from the virus. Felt, felt like everybody was getting enough virus talk in their life, and the last thing I wanted to do is come on here and talk people and add the virus to it. But... Yeah. As, as time goes on, it'll be nearly impossible to, to you know, continue to never talk about um, the virus. But also in, in this conversation, it relates to, <laughs> to beatball. So we had a beatball tournament here recently, the, the Indy Thunder Invitational. There are eight teams there. We covered it a lot here on the show, obviously. I was open about the fact that I was a bit uncomfortable covering it just from the standpoint that my own personal uh, approach with the virus is to only do things I have to do. And I'm not saying everybody has to live that. That's just the philosophy I've been going with. So um, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think it was a good idea to have a tournament simply because of the virus. Uh, obviously, I love beatball. I know, Darnell, you throw great tournaments. The Indy, th the Indy Thunder throw a tournament every year that people love. It's been a fantastic tournament. You do a great job doing it uh, every year. And I know this tournament was no different. I'm sure you had all the same perks. I'm sure everybody enjoyed being there, um, being part Part, uh, participating in the tournament so i i'm not against the the beatball tournaments ever being held <laughs> other than when there's a pandemic so uh that's where my uh discomfort came from um so i uh 
I, I guess the way I'm looking at how how to lay the show out, I was thinking that uh, I I would throw out my thoughts on on where where I was, um, have Seth kind of join it. Seth and I were going to do a pre-show interview, uh, pre-show talk, which we never ended up doing. Um, I was going to try to <laughs> we, we 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 were going to try to kind of get on the same page so we could just uh, you know uh, attack our side of this. Um, uh, you know, from uh, like a joint uh, perspective, but we never did. So my thought for the show, if everybody's cool with this, is I'll kind of throw out my thoughts of where my where where I stand now that it's over uh, and why, and, and I'll try to do it briefly, and let Seth jump in and add to it. Um, and and then uh, Darnell, as the tournament organizer, um, can can defend that in any way. I'd certainly I'll give you all the all the room to you know to give your side that you want. And, and David Smith is here as uh, with a background in nursing, and he's he's going to come from it. He also participated in the tournament, and uh, he's coming from it as somebody who parts participated in the tournament with a, a medical background as a nurse. Um, so we, I, I've, we got some different perspectives. Um, and, and then from there, you know, it could just be an open conversation, but that's my idea of how to lay it out. Everybody cool with that? Any thoughts? Yeah, sounds good. All right. All right. So <clears throat> for me, uh, again, uh, I, I admitted when the, the MBBA World Series was um, canceled back in May, I had Blake Boudreau, the president of the MBBA on this show, where I admitted that I too would have voted if I was a board member with a vote, I would have voted against having the tournament simply because of safety reasons and, and concern for people's health not think it was a good idea from that perspective. So obviously when I heard of the MB, in, Indy Invitational, as well as the Indy Edge tournament that's coming up in September, we'll talk more about that later. Um, you know, I, it, as much as I love beatball and I love these players getting to play, I didn't think it was a good idea, but still I covered the game. I listened to almost every single game. I enjoyed the games. I talked to the teams leading up to the games. Uh, you know, I, I highlighted the tournament right after with Eric. You know, we talked about the tournament and the games that were played. So I, I, I dove in and, and I enjoyed all the beatball aspect of it. But then uh, – you know, about a week later, a week afterwards, I hear that there are two members, and I, I don't want to mention the individuals by name. I don't think that's important. I don't even want to mention the team by name. I don't, I don't think that's pertinent to the conversation. If other people feel differently. I can't, can't control what you say, but I don't feel like it's really pertinent to the conversation. I, I feel like what's important is we found out, uh, I found out, probably within within a week after the tournament that two members of one of the teams had tested positive for the virus. And frankly, from that point, I had a hard time getting any other information and getting other people to talk to me. Um, I, I feel like the tournament was, uh, it, uh, everybody was very bold. They were participating, bold and excited to be having the tournament coming up. And they were going to go play. But once a couple people who were involved in the tournament um, had, had tested positive, everything went quiet, at least until that 14-day period from when they tested, or 13, 14-day period from when they were tested. Then it was like, oh, hey, everybody's great. We had a great tournament. It was all wonderful, successful. I know the beatball part of it was successful, but I personally, and that's where I stand now, am not convinced at all uh, because it, it, it's been handled so quietly that everything was handled on the up and up once a couple people tested positive. So I'm hoping by the end of this conversation, I feel better about that. But when it comes to this virus and how quickly it can spread and how dangerous it could be, like for me, going back to when I say, like I, I'm living a philosophy right now in life of not doing anything I don't have to do. And for me, where that really comes from is, I, more than not wanting to get the virus, I don't want to spread the virus. I don't want to end up with it, not know I have it, carry it around for a while and spread it to other people. I would hate to find out I gave this nasty virus to somebody 
um, because I was out, you know, doing something I didn't have to do. So I, I, uh, I, I was not excited and I was ready to go live with Seth like a week ago. <laughs> Once I found out this was going on, I'm glad I backed down cause I don't, I don't know where I would have gone with it, but, um, I was ready to attack this right out of the gates because I hated how quiet everything went once a couple people tested positive. And if it was for their privacy of those two individuals, I don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem with the fact that we have a virus that can spread like wildfire and people weren't on a mountaintop shouting, hey, you need to go be aware of this. You may have been exposed and, and you may go get tested. So. Uh, that that's why I'm sure I'll have more thoughts as we go on and, and David and, and Darnell kind of respond to what I said and what Seth ends up saying, but that that's where I stand right now. I'll turn it over to you, Seth, see what you want to add to that. I mean, obviously you covered a lot of it. I mean, we were both, um, I think irritated by the silence that came out, um, after we, we found out that there had been positive, um, tests right everybody again like like you said everybody was on beatball nation pounding the drum we can do this we can do this and once something did go wrong um there was silence right and, and again how how covid works is you know people can be asymptomatic and then transfer it so we don't know who um got also got that virus as people traveled from texas and and wherever else i don't know where all the <laughs> all the teams came yeah, from yeah no i mean uh -huh. i i know of one individual that that went from indy back back to where they came from and like right. within within 2 days was traveling to a third state so right. like it had that individual um been you know what is it uh, asymptomatic, asymptomatic like, right. yeah and, yep. uh, like the number of people that could have come in contact right. with that person I is I, I I can't even guess what it is so I'm thinking and, and that's just one individual so we take all, all right. the individuals from this tournament once they found out they may have been exposed are they going and telling all the people they've right. been around since that point you know what I mean it's like I don't right. know that there's any chain of communication that went on from that point like I don't right. see what what was gained by going quiet. I I this like if I may have been exposed, I hope somebody comes and hits me in the head and says, "Hey, you may have been exposed. You need to be aware of this." I I don't want somebody it, being it, quiet and handling this quiet. You know, but uh, it, so. and it's and it's part of being you know, you know, taking responsibility, right? right. Exactly. Uh, right. I mean, a, a lot of this is you know we need to stand up, be adults. Um, it might cause some sacrifice on our part, but we need to pay, take responsibility for our actions. And I didn't think that there was any um, responsibility taken by Darnell, you, um, Jared, right? I'll call the names out. Like um, tournament organizers. It, yes, basically. right. Th those guys. And, and, um, and, and uh, you know, to me, and this is, you know, totally decoupled from what Neil said. I, you know, like Neil, I think that only essential things should be really going on or, or relatively essential, right? Because I do, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I do um, participate in, you know, junior youth football practice, right? We're just, you know, it's all social distancing. We have kids out there, uh, you know, just doing footwork drills and stuff like that. Um, but the, 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 what I saw from the time the World Series was canceled was this kind of push on, you know, on your guys' part, the, the Thunder's part, um, to get this going on. And I thought there was a lot of ego involved in that. I thought that is, it, it was, we want to show that we're still the best team out there when everybody already knew you were the best team out there. And, and you guys kind of pushed this. A, to show the MBBA that, you know, they were wrong in their decision, but B, to um, hold up the Thunder again as that drive for five, the, the best beatball team out there, which, as I said, you know, back in March and April when this was all popping up, we already knew. We already knew that the Thunder was going to win this tournament. If the Thunder's at the next tournament, the Thunder's going to win, right? It's just a reality. 
And, and so I felt there was an ego push that was unnecessary. And then for you guys not to come out and say, hey, look, something did go wrong, I thought showed a, a lack of responsibility on your part. Uh, but so, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, again, I understand to a certain extent that you got to, you know, we want life to go forward um, and we have to do things. Uh, but I did think there was far too much risk involved for something that that wasn't as um, you know wasn't that important. I would have much rather seen the Jets and the Thunder play a, a seven game series, personally, <laughs> to see who the true champion was. I but guess you're coming from that, that just because it would have been a smaller like group coming yes. together. Yeah, yeah. there would have just been two teams, a smaller group. You wouldn't, you know, a uh, uh, legitimate uh contenders you know what i'm saying legitimate contenders right. and uh um, you know a, a smaller number of people who would have been involved so that was that was my thought but go ahead i'm, I'm you know, well i just i, I want to ask you a quick question before we we yes, turn sir. it over to darnell so you mentioned you coach you know we've talked uh, before that you coach youth football uh, and you said you've been going out and you got, you're still coaching youth football going out and doing drills would Correct. you support an eight-team youth football tournament? No, at this point yeah. in time, no, we yeah, would not. Exactly. We, I would, and especially, I mean, we are we're contained, right? We're contained in the city. Um, you right. know, it, it's not like we're bringing people from Nevada or even yeah, LA, Oakland. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're all right. contained within our own little our yeah. own little spot these kids go to school together their family members it's a different you know i, I would yeah, not no, and the only know, reason i, I even asked is because you you know you said not to be hypocritical but i i just wanted right. to i i knew what your answer would be but i wanted to make it clear that even though you are out coaching your youth football you would not support a like a tournament of any kind so Right. Uh, no, I don't know. Not, I guess it's not, probably not, not even that, that important. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, want, I want to turn it over to you first, Darnell Booker, since you were the, uh, t you know, one of the tournament organizers and give you a chance to respond to all that. Sure. Thanks. Okay. A couple things. Um, first of all, um, I want to approach a couple of things you guys said. Can you guys hear me? Am I clear? Because I got some different headphones on. Are you guys, am I, uh, am I coming? We can okay? hear you. Um, you're not okay. real loud, but we, we can't okay. hear you. Anyway, okay. okay. So, um, first off, you know, with the decision of the NBA canceling the World Series, I was, you know, every, a lot of people were bummed. It's not like the Indy Thunder reached out and said, let's have a tournament. So, what happened was, I'm not sure if you guys got the whole story, is eight to 10 teams that said they were interested in having a tournament to say um, called upon you know they you know which which are growing which are success of regional tournaments in the past or what have you um, called myself and Jared and you know asked if we could do something and I said you know I want to check with our CDC our health department and things to change so it's not like it was an ego thing you know we did our homework because each state is different. And right. um, we also had to, I said, we, I told Jared and I, we got together because, you know, it's not like we went out and reached out to anybody. They came, the eight to 10 teams that wanted to play beat baseball, wanted to play some ball. And, you right. know, that, that being said, so there was no ego push here on behalf of the Indy Thunder trying to say that, to show that we are the best team still to put that out there. And secondly, I did my homework and we revised a, a waiver for, a waiver uh, for everybody involved in this tournament from volunteers to the players, to the, um, umpires or what have you. We got together, we did a waiver, Jared and I did a waiver. He put something together and he ran it with me and everything was up and up and it was great. So, Everybody, you know, and again, this is quote unquote, the key word here is optional. We did not make anybody uh, play this game. They didn't want to. It's an optional choice of their own personal, what they wanted to do. But if they did come, they had to sign this waiver before they stepped onto the field. So that was first off. Secondly, 
Um, just just real quick though like uh, when when <laughs> seth had mentioned you know like when, you know for us like we we have an issue with like responsibility the waiver for me that that just eliminates any responsibility i i, I am with 100 percent. i understand everybody made their choice to come play i'm not i personally am not blaming you for other people <laughs> deciding to travel and play um i you no, know they I'm made just, their I'm own just, choices just, but the saying. waiver the waiver part for me that's just you guys saying hey you know what you're taking this chance but you're not doing it on our responsibility <laughs> we're, co- we're, we're, we're covering our asses something yeah. might go wrong but, 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 but a lot of asses. but um, a, a lot of organizations i mean may they may not hold up in court per se or whatever but right. a lot of people are having people do waiver forms no i understand i'm just saying as far as does. So, I'm just saying so, as far as this conversation goes, really the waiver isn't. For me, the waiver is not right. important because the waiver, the, all, like Seth said, that, all that does is protect you guys um, from responsibility. Well, so I'm, I'm just saying, but, but again, but again we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't make it. Let me keep going on a couple points all right. that I still have. So anyway, right, go ahead. We have, <laughs> then we also, um, so with me, with the drive and the, some of the connections I have to put some things in place, um, we got like, safeguards in place like i went out and purchased and and got and made got a connection to get a sanitizing sponsor so we had the sanitation all in place and we gave the teams their sanitation personal bottles and four and we made sure we had things set in place for wiping down bases every half inning even though thursday was a soaker so it didn't really need a lot of wiping down but we still wiped down as needed and we also had teams that were coming like teams that were coming into the tents would wipe down the chairs immediately after the team left. So we know the teams that were coming in would wipe the chairs down. We had two tents per team and that created the social distancing with the, with the chairs and everything like that. So all that stuff right. was positive. So our second thing, so that's just um, one, one uh, point. The second point is you guys talked about that we weren't responsible in um, about the two positive tests. Well, we were within the eight teams because once we found out about the situation and what had happened, we put it out to all the teams that were participated in this tournament. Hey, this is what happened. This is what went down. And we, and we was, Jared and I, I'm sure I know I was, but I'm sure Jared was in constant contact with these teams within the 14 day period. So, hey, if you need to, you know, monitor it, see where your, see where your status is. If you feel like you, you know, because we know if this, uh, with these two people, a couple of the teams were in their brackets. So we just told them to make sure you monitor yourself. And we, I checked on the full 14 day period. Um, nothing came about it. Um, so we were responsible in the sense we did handle it. We handled it amongst the eight teams, not beat on then whatever beat all nation wants to do. They want to do after the fact, whatever was quiet, it was quiet, but we did handle it amongst the eight teams. We did not ignore it. We, we handled it and we handled it properly. We also checked on these two individuals. Those two individuals uh, basically had some mild, you know, mild symptoms. This, this, this was, this was, didn't even happen. They didn't, con- they didn't get this. This was on Sunday when they got back. So during the whole tournament, you know, this happened before they prior before they got there. So there was nothing going on while they were there. But again, I understand balls and stuff like that or whatever touched or whatever people next to people or whatever. But Point of the matter is they were mild, they're doing fine, they're doing great. Um, and also I'm just gonna say also, so we did handle it as a uh I did handle it as an organizer in the committee amongst the eight teams, and everybody seemed to be satisfied with that. And um, so no, it did not go ignored at all. And I feel like we were responsible in that sense. It's not like we tell the whole MBBA because we just told those that were responsible that were in the tournament and those that have participated in a tournament we let everybody know that was involved with the tournament about the situation and everything was handled fine um as far as and then we also in the next 14 day period so we feel like it's not that also we wanted to show the mdba we could do it the point of the matter is these teams these eight to ten teams eight teams that we want that said they wanted to have a tournament we wanted to play ball everybody loves beat baseball I know in some parts of the country it can't be that way, unfortunately. Um, but and we, like I said, we definitely work closely with our with our health officials, our state officials, and the CDC. And we were definitely under the 250 capacity that could be uh, with 
with the uh, tournament with the tournament because we were shut down as of June fourteenth. We did not have our own original indie tournament due to what the governor said. So after June fourteenth, everybody was playing. Uh, travel baseball was up and going. We looked at all that. We looked at our fields. Everything was open in Indiana. And by the way, the first the first vice president of the NBBA came out there and saw the tournament. And I was quite uh, happy with it because I mean, even they kept Jan kept her social distancing along with uh, one of our volunteers, Bruce. They saw the tournament and went and went over quite fine. So um, it just depends on how you handle it and what perspective it is. But no, I don't. It's not an ego thing with me. It's not an ego thing with our team. It's just people came to ask uh, who could put on the tournament. So obviously they reached out to me and I and I did all my homework before we said yes. And then Jared and I. Uh, worked on different forms, and I went out and got a some good, some significant sponsors that would help us with precaution. Let me ask you, have, um, because again, I, 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 the the biggest issue for me um, wasn't anything going into the tournament. It was again uh, how how the the two positive cases were handled. Um, I'm not, and I'm not accusing you of ignoring it. And I don't believe that I was important. I don't think it was important for people to, um, you know what I mean? The whole nation, the whole beatball nation, the whole beatball world didn't need to be notified. But that, that avenue is used often to notify uh, people of stuff. Like immediately when the 14 days were over, Beatball Nation was notified with big, bold success. Hello, we did this successfully. Not not coming from you or Jared, I understand. I'm just saying that's kind of the message that came across. But during that 14 days, there was no message. And, uh, and, and again, I know I didn't need to know the information. Seth didn't need to know the information. But it is a great way to get information out in a situation when uh, information needs to go out. So did you just contact like each uh, team contact or how, how did you deal with making sure the teams knew? Um, we have a, we had an email chain and um, we sent out email and I had contact numbers and I checked on everybody, you know, every couple, two or three days, I checked on all the teams myself. Jared may, like I said, Jared may not have had, but I had, but we also had a, email of the eight teams that we contacted that, that was on the tournament and we, we checked with them and we had an email went out to the eight teams and Jared put something out. We went and Jared wrote something up and we ran it we ran it by me and, but it was all fine and everything. So we just had an email, an uh, eight team email. D Smith I just want to point and, and, out one, hold on what, I let just me want say to say one go. <laughs> Oh, what I want to say is, look, I don't control. Of course, I just read. I don't control what Beatball Nation puts out. To, to I just read it, but I don't have no control. Even if it was quiet during that fourteen day period, I, I don't write. I don't do anything like that. I I just you know, obviously they may have hoping. You know, I don't want to say if they want to write anything premature. Just wanted to see what the results were, and you know, I I, I don't know. Like I said. You said it was all quiet for 14 days, and after the 14 days, it was the big bold letters. But I, I'm just saying, I didn't mean personally to have anything. To yeah, do and, and I'm not. I'm I'm talking about the situation. I, you know, you're the only one that chose to come on and talk to us. So yeah, you're the only one. Uh, I mean, from yeah. the organization. So you're yeah. the only one I could talk to. Sure, uh, yeah. What what were oh, you I just want to point out. Stuff? You know, just one thing that there are two things, real quick. Yeah, I, I do think there is still a responsibility to make. Um, news public right because there might be uh, other organizi organizers who are looking at doing other tournaments and perhaps this isn't the, the the smartest thing to do and and second my biggest thing wasn't the field right and, and i hear you darnell saying you had you know hand sanitizer and all this and that out at the field my thing was where do people stay right? It's the hotels, it's the restaurants, it's the cars, it's the traveling. That was the dangerous part. I think well, being outside, you know, you could do that uh, uh, social distancing, but I didn't think going into it, I didn't think at least, you know, because there wasn't a lot of information, and, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm tuned in, right? I'm not. I, I, please don't <laughs> think I'm saying that, but 
you know, there didn't seem to be a lot of information about, hey, this is how we're going to handle the, the, the room, just, so we, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so those are my kind of two things on that. But I, I, Okay, well, Bam, let me, let me address that. So coming into the tournament, they had everything was on them, how they uh, booked their travel and stuff. We gave them hotels, and a lot of people didn't stay at the main hotel that we use at our indie tournament. Uh, so all that stuff was on the, their teams originally. And we also, just so to make you guys know, it was optional, wasn't mandatory. Uh, we had, since we didn't have trainers for, the, for this tournament, that we had, I told every team contact that if they wanted to, I mean, I, because that gets into more of the uh, HIPAA type thing or whatever, I'm not sure where I, what, I'm not sure that's the right word, but I also had, if they wanted to, each team had a choice. If they wanted to have their temperature checked, they could have had their temperature checked if they wanted to but that was optional and that was made point to the teams to have. We had it on hand if they wanted to get their temperature checked besides time in the wait. So. Was the mask wearing uh, yeah, that optional was, that was, or yeah. mandatory? Well, when, when, when you're competing, when you're competing at, on the field, you did not have to wear masks. Now, and if you weren't, and the key word is social distancing. If you weren't social distancing, you had to have your mask on. That's why we had, the two tents per team and the chairs were spread out. If you weren't social distancing, you had to have your masks on. If you were competing, you did not have to have your mask on or coaching. Even if you were coaching, you could, you could wear your mask. You didn't have to wear your mask as long as you were social distancing and if you're in a, a field of competition. The, re the reason I ask is because listening to a lot of the streams, I would hear people talking to each other and then make comments like, oh, I should go get my mask. Or even like DB, who you guys scheduled to, um, you know, do, do a lot of the streaming. Now, I, I can't see the screen, so I don't know if DB ever wore a mask or not, but he certainly seemed to be poo-pooing over the idea of wearing a mask through whenever he mentioned it and laughing it off like, ah, screw the mask. Well, so, as, as, and and as, he'd be sitting there talking to one or two people that were right there, you know, close enough to the, the – I don't know how close they were to each other. Again, I can't see the screen. But again, it, I it seemed like one of your own volunteers had a screw the mask uh, thing. Well, again, I, I'm uh, – being the tournament director, I've – for the last, for three or four days when we had the tournament, I put in over 43,000 steps on my Fitbit. So I wasn't playing police patrol or mass police patrol, but I, I assume I, whatever I, what I saw was there was a lot of social distancing and people did have their masks on what I've seen, but I know I'm again, I wasn't, I'm not gonna, I wasn't playing the mass, you know, the police mass patrol, but I assume that, was anybody you know, was anybody else responsible for that? Was there anybody assigned to go around and remind people or to check? You know, we, 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 we told them in there when we met with those guys to that the Marion County was required to have your mask on if you weren't competing on the field and if you weren't social distancing, which is the key word. If you can't social distance, wear your mask. And I'm going to say everybody did that. So, but the answer to my question as far as was somebody assigned, the answer is no. No, I mean it was okay. nobody was All nobody right. was assigned to play <laughs> mass patrol. No. All right. D Smith, let's bring you in. We left you silent long <laughs> enough. You've you've got a nursing background and, and that was what drove you to want to come out here. You went out there and risked your life, you silly man. But go ahead. What what do you got for us? Oh uh, well, I'm just kinda like wow right now. I didn't <laughs> uh I'm sorry that Booker has to kind of defend himself. Uh, he shouldn't have to defend himself, but um, yeah. So my my whole point of you know this whole was it was it risky? Yeah, everything's you know yes it was risky. Um, was it was, was I kind of nervous about traveling? Of course, yeah, I was nervous about traveling. Um, but you know, I've been a nurse since 2005, and we were taught in school how to protect yourself from the invisible stuff. You know, it's always that stuff's always been out there. It hasn't gone anywhere. We've, we've lived, we've always lived in a, in a, um, in a uh, dangerous environment, whether we know, you know, realize it or not, you know, um, there's, I agree. I agree. You know, so we're not always in a pandemic though. I mean, that's right? where it changes, you know, I mean, I agree with you a hundred percent. A pandemic can take place. I think because of mm -hmm. all the crap going around in this world, a pandemic could break out 
any day of the week. I, 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 I feel like we're lucky that it doesn't happen more often, but in this case, we're actually in a pandemic. It's not, it could happen. It's happening. Right. So then, then, then it comes to times like this, like, what do you do when it happens? Right. What do you do? Um, and it seems that this, that, 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 what do you do thing is causing a lot of, um, issues right now, as far as like divisiveness and, um, and, um, but from a medical background, you're taught that keep your hands clean at all times. Uh, don't touch your face. And uh, if you're sick, stay home. And if, if you're around somebody sick, keep your distance. We've, we've been taught this since we were in, in, you know, not just in the medical field, but we were told this in elementary school, you know, but nobody, nobody listened. And uh, now that we're so, or nobody, not, not that they didn't listen, they didn't pick up those, um, those uh, behaviors, those, those yeah. uh, clean behaviors, right? We didn't, we didn't right. take them seriously. And so now that, now that it has happened, uh, we're so connected, you know, than, you know, than we were 20, 30 years ago. We're so, we're even more connected than ever before. So it's going to spread fast and it has happened. And so what do you do, right? And so some people are like, ah, stay inside. Don't go outside. Some people are like, you know what? I can't do that. Even if I want to, I have to go to work. Okay. And in their situation, what are you going to do? Okay, well, I need to wear a mask to protect myself and to protect other people. But no matter what, I still have to go to work. So every everything's individualized. You know what I mean? Every every um, person has to decide how they're going to approach this pandemic. And right. on top of right. all that, you have the media just you know pumping shit out. You know, um, <laughs> and so but, I mean, going. I mean, where Seth and I have been coming from with this, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, I, what you're saying is exactly right. You haven't said anything that's wrong at all. But again, like f- from our standpoint, I, I should just speak for myself. Um, right. There you go. At this point in time, it, it's best to stick. If somebody has to work, I'm not hating on them. If they've got to go right. put food on their plate, let them go put food on their plate. Right. I love beef baseball as much as anything I've loved in my entire life and that is absolutely true I have given up personal relationships in the past for my drive to to because I loved people more than I loved the other individual and for I mean that I don't know what that says about me but that's just truth so I love this sport and I gave up when I played it, I gave up a lot personally to play it. Uh, mm-hmm. But I would not consider it essential <laughs> in my life. It's not right. something that in a pandemic I would have to do. I would miss it. I certainly would miss not being around my teammates, but it's not, it would never be something I, well, I don't know what I would have said in my twenties, but at this point in my life, it's not something I would have like forced. But, but you would, you, you were hard headed in your twenties, right? I mean, you I were, was, and I might, I, I, more, I've admitted this to others. I right. may have been, I may have said, screw it. I'm going to play. You may have right, also I mean, at one point. I don't know. Right. I mean, it, right. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I always. Yeah, you've that. always been a germaphobe, so yeah. that, that, that would have saved you. That <laughs> would always yeah. save you. But I, you know me. So what, you, so, you're the one that used to correct me when I was like, when I dropped something, say, "Ah, oh, God made dirt, so dirt can't hurt." <laughs> and you're like, "You're you're an idiot if you believe that." <laughs> no, go eat a handful of dirt, then, stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. so, yeah. we, we've all, you know, you've always been smarter than me. Is I, I, right. I, I, I might have right. chanced it. You years ago i don't know it's hard to say no, well, so- when you're young you think like that you think you're invincible and stuff like yeah. that but it but but my thing is you know now that you have a little bit of maturity right you make a, a mature decision yeah and, and, and i so thought my, that my mature ahead, decision sir. was to prepare and to be safe and and you know i decided you know what um there's been pandemics in our in our his in our you know human history many times and um, they even happened without vaccines, and you know we we're we're here. We 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 evolved. We got this far. So it, yeah, it tell the Native out. American, tell the Native Americans. That. I understand that. I understand that's a lot of them passed away. I get it. But um, so when it came to me personally, I was like, okay, we they had to figure out how to live with it. Why we need to figure out how to live with it? You know, we still got to. Um, not that. So you you know. So I stopped. I, I stayed in my house. You know. Um, because it was so fresh and we needed to kind of slow the spread down. Um, and I still stay in my house. Uh, I, I don't go out eating restaurant. I don't go out. I don't go out anywhere. I can't social distance. Now was the thing with the beatball thing. I was like, okay, 
Um, 90% of the time I'll be able to social, uh, I can pretty much for sure say I can be able to social distance. So the only thing I need to worry about is what am I going to do in the airport? What am I going to do on the plane? What am I going to do in the hotel room? Um, and so I, I, have, I built the plan. I was like, okay, um, I'm going to wear two masks in the airport. I'm going to wear two masks on the plane. I'm not going to touch my face. I'm going to have some hand sanitizer easily accessible to where I can just easily wash my hands whenever I want to. Um, and that's the only, I mean, that's, uh, and, and when I got to the hotel, I said, um, I brought my dad um, so he could help me. But we cleaned, uh, we got to the hotel door. Uh, we cleaned the doorknob with some, you know, uh, anti you know, uh, wipes. And we, you know, after we put our gloves on and then we went in the room, uh, my dad helped wipe down all the surfaces with the wipes, um, all the surfaces, the remotes, the switches, all that stuff. And that's what we did. So once we did that, we're good take our mask off, change our clothes. And, and our whole plan was just to be in the hotel room and play beat ball on the field. And that was it. If I couldn't social distance, I was going to wear a mask and I did wear a mask in, in the van. Um, uh, but once I got to the field, I could social distance, you know, social distance. So um, it was just about having faith in myself, uh, my, having faith in myself, having faith in God and just uh, taking a risk. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, that's what life's about. Um, it's not, I don't think, the problem is when people look at other people who, who are approaching this in a, in a, in a different way than theirs and, and kind of, um, you know, making them answer questions, you know, that's the, that, and that's what we got to try to avoid. We got to understand that it's all individualized. The, we got to, what we need to worry about is the people who don't literally give a shit about this. They think it's not real. Those are the people we need to worry about. Um, well, can I ask you a question? Isn't that yeah. an individual choice though? I mean, isn't it, you're saying it's all an individual thing. Right. right. And isn't that just as, in, as, you know, individualized, yeah, yeah. individualized, it's not give them a damn. Oh, I almost cussed Neil dog. He almost <laughs> dropped the big bomb. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact is, is it's their choice. And we can't stop that. So we have to figure out how to protect ourselves, number one, and how to protect other people. And we, you know, and it's, it's okay if, if somebody chooses to stay inside and not do a damn thing. Um, but it's also okay for someone to say, hey, let's throw a b-ball tournament that's going to be majority outside to where people can easily social distance and let's have a little bit of fun, you know, in a smart way. And, and that's okay, too. Um, it's not okay. I, to I agree. But it, it, well, one, one of the things you just said, we need to protect ourselves and learn to protect other people. And that's where, again, it, it comes down to me. It's like bringing eight teams together with six of them coming from, you know, other states. There's no hot way to – there's spots. Yeah, I mean, Texas hot is one of the hottest <laughs> spots there in that tournament. And four right. teams from Texas went there. So <laughs> right. I, I'm just saying there's no way to protect other people if you go out and, and interact, you know. There's but, no but, way to protect other people. But, that, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's where I'm – that's where I'm – yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, not, not, nothing's, nothing's – uh, what do you call it? Uh, full, I mean, nothing's – Guaranteed. <laughs> There's always a in every situation, you know, um, whether yeah. it's, you know, I mean, it's just uh, how, how you, go, your plane could have gone down. We know that, you know, <laughs> believe me. I mean, no, I mean, book, I, mean, I think book, not, I think, not, yeah. What are we going to say, I, book? No, I just basically was going to say um, when we had the tournament, not, not all eight teams were there at once at all times because we slotted. I never, if, you saw, never crossed if you saw, if you saw, if you saw the format, if you saw the format, um, basically, bracket A was played on Thursday, and then one yeah, day yeah. Was bracket B, and then all of bracket B was there on Friday, and then uh, the games were so spread out. And then, like I said, we had two fields, and nobody was in groups or clusters or anything like that. So the way uh, we slotted the games and everything like that, not all eight, not all eight teams were there at one time. Listen, right. I, want, I want to be clear, Darnell. I and David said he, you know, he hates that you're on here defending yourself. No, I, like, I, I, mean, I, 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 and, and I don't even feel like you tournament. need. Right. No, I, 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 I just want to say, as far as the tournament goes, I have no doubt that you tried to do everything as well as uh, possible. I have, I'm not here attacking you guys that you didn't organize it well. I'm not here trying to attack you saying that you didn't set up everything correctly. I, I think you made the best attempt that you could make of hand holding a tournament in, during a pandemic. 
Um, I, 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 again, just on a personal level, don't they, and not, I don't think that you guys shouldn't have had a tournament. I don't think anybody should have a tournament right, right. now for one. Um, but, but to, uh, you know, and, and, and going back to like things uh, like how it was handled afterwards, like it, after a couple people tested positive, I'm having a hard time believing the way this thing spreads that nobody else has tested positive that we're around those two people. Like I, I'm not accusing anyone. I, I don't know what I'm saying other than I don't believe that those are the only two people that, if that's the case, the, the virus took place differently around that tournament than it has anywhere else in the world. I, I don't <laughs> see how it's possible that, that those two people could not have spread it to anybody. That just and I, here's I, the problem. I, and, and let me just jump in on that. And the, yeah. and the fact, though, that there was silence afterwards about the, the, the two positive tests leaves us out there wondering. It's like, you know, th th this is why it's important as an organizer to be upfront and open and honest with everybody and, and totally transparent because now we don't know. There could be five other people who've tested positive. Well, that, that, that's that's why nice. I came, that's why I came on your show. You guys show today to speak on behalf of, I wasn't going to just say silent as a tournament organizer. I'm just going to speak what I always say what I need to say, you know, and put it out there. Mm -hmm. And we told the teams what they needed to do and monitor it. You know, we, we can only tell them what they should be doing or what they monitor or anything like that. So, unfortunately, I mean, you know, obviously everybody seemed to be healthy and everything, and they did what they were supposed to do. And if you follow the uh, CDC guidelines, whatever we have for the state of Indiana or whatever at that time frame, and like I've always said, obviously it's a little saying, a little joke. I mean, I, I think I could believe it sometimes because – like I said, they were forecasting rain the whole entire weekend. I said, God loves deep ball. He does love deep ball. And where I'm from, I know that. So, but it's like, you know, I know you guys find it hard to believe and where there's only, where there's only two cases, but hey, you know what? It, 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 that's where it is. Um, I mean, that's what the, what the reports say after 14 days, when everybody comes, comments that everybody's fine, whether they want to reveal what happened to them or not. It, I mean, obviously, all eight teams are perfectly healthy and they're fine. And the two that tested are perfectly fine. Have very I am awesome. happy to hear that. I am very yeah. happy. I don't want anybody getting, you know right. what I mean? I don't want anybody to go through the worst of this, All right, which right. But, always but, comes but, back to why I didn't think it should be held. <laughs> you know, but, but, I, but I, then, I can like tell you also. But, but, I mean, to some, I mean, and we understand different states and everything like that, but like David said, you know, you can walk out of your apartment and get hit by a car. That's the risk you take. You know what I mean? I mean, you just, I mean, you just got to. It's true, but you, there, there's good risks and there's bad risks. I could do I, if I, I, there, if and I that, and getting hit highway. by a car. Getting hit by a car is an unknown risk. This is a known risk. You know, there's unknown risk and known risk. Right. This I, is I a known but, risk. But I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, that, and, I, and, I under, and I understand the, uh, the, the pros and cons of it, and I, and I know there's people that are against it, but that's why as a tournament organizer, I want to come and speak to you guys, whether whether because everybody's going to agree to disagree, you just got to come to Yeah, I know. I, I, and, there's and, 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 about, and, and let me say, yeah. can I just say, and, and yeah, yeah. you know what, Darnell, right? I mean, you and I have known each other, what, 30 years? Yeah. And yeah. I, I've said this before, right? I don't, I, I can't think of anybody in beatball who, outside of, you know, like, like you know, like players on, you know, about their actual play, um, I can't think of anybody who's been attacked more throughout beatball these 30 years than you. Right. And so, so I don't, I don't worry about you, you know, defending yourself. Cause I know that you, you're, you're, quite <laughs> you're used to it. Of, of, <laughs> yeah, of, of, of handling that. And I don't, I don't even mind piling on, you know, because, because I, again, I know you can handle it. And, and, and I know, you know, over these 30 years that, that, you know, if anything, everybody should know, Beatball, you know, your, your heart is in the right place when it comes to beatball. And, and that's why I, that's why I'm not afraid to come on your show. I'll come on anybody's show and talk about it. Right. And we, I mean, Seth and I, when I told him I was going to put a thing out in the nation to invite people to come on, we we were in full agreement, right, that the door was open to you from the get. You know, we figured you'd probably want in, and we were, we were you know, if you didn't want in, we our volunteer, we probably would have reached out to you to come in just to give you the opportunity to, you know, come in and, and speak your side of it.
and I, you know, I don't, I don't expect this episode to change anybody really. The people that feel the way Seth and I do are still going to feel that way probably. And the people that, that disagree are still going to disagree, but it was, a, uh, I don't know. It's been on my mind and, it, and it's been, you know, it, I, I also realized once it was, you know, posted out, once DB came out and posted the 13 day success, blah, 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 that other people seem to feel the way Seth and I did. We, you know, they're, they're, there wasn't a lot the the the, re, the response i guess was mixed so that kind of helped me because I, I had reached a point of being unsettled i wanted to do with this and uh i don't know in the end i just felt like it'd be cool to just come on and have a have a healthy conversation and let people take take from it what they do and that's hey, can, I just, have a uh, hey, hold on. can i can i can i just go back to just controversy for a second i thought db that that was the weakest thing that anybody's ever done. DB comes out there every time there's a problem with the World Series. Oh, the the, the fields for 2021 aren't going to be ready, blah, blah, blah. He's the first one to be out there breaking news. And then he holds on to this for, for seven days, right? And then four, once the four, pop 14 up, days. 14 yeah, 14 days. days? <laughs> give, me a, give me a break. Weakest thing ever. Weakest yeah, thing I ever. Ever, I, I was ever, I was ever, thinking that ever. I I I'd forgotten uh, to say anything today, but I was thinking that last night, uh, not necessarily in the same terms you are, but the the bottom line, like even like when I had Blake Boudreaux on, he talked about how DB forces him to make everything transparent. DB is like uh, transparency is so important to DB, right. but he was quiet as hell for 14 days didn't have right. didn't have a word to say until he reached the 14 days then it back out yeah. there mr bold like oh, i told you we could do this you know where were you for 14 yeah. days you know, nowhere. <laughs> exactly. nowhere nowhere <laughs> quiet so and i can also on that silence i i was in touch with somebody on the team that the two members tested positive from and told that individual i wanted to do this show this week and that person's reaction was, oh, no, 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 don't do that. No, no, we don't want that. I don't want that. I reached out to that person again and asked for an off-record conversation to see if it would help me get, like, this is where I'm coming from. You know, maybe we could talk and you would give me a different perspective. I didn't even get a response. So that, that again, you know, it's where I'm not like I was pertinent to knowing any information. I wasn't at the tournament. There's no reason I had to know anything, but that wasn't the only like silence I, I was getting. I stopped reaching out to teens because I was getting like, I don't know, one out of three responding. I, I, I don't know. I didn't, I, whatever. I, I just wasn't getting a lot, a lot of response. So uh, that's why I kind of gave up on it. But I don't know. The, the whole thing was weird and just didn't know uh, how it was handled afterwards once there are two positive tests. Was, uh, it just rubs me the wrong way on how it was handled. So that, that's where I was coming from and having to do this. I really don't have a lot more to say on, on, on it. I think we've kind of talked it out. But does anybody uh, have any final thoughts on this? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't wait till next year, man. Uh, <laughs> I feel like, uh, you know, we'll be, you know, the league will be better prepared. The, the virus isn't going to go anywhere. Um, hopefully there's going to, you know, be a vaccine uh, by then and hope a, a safe vaccine, right? Um, and, uh, but regardless, the, the league will have more time to plan, you know, um, how, how yeah. things, so I'm excited about next year for sure, man. And, and we can, you know, make some more Darnell? memories. Yeah. Yeah. Darnell. Why don't you have, um, I know coming to he reached out to me, uh, the head umpire, uh, Jason Price. So it'd be good to get his perspective, but he did, he was, uh, very yeah. uplift, very very supportive. He said, you know, he was going to write something up to the board. I don't know what your connections are with the board or with Blake or whatever, but he is going to write something up to the board and about his experience at the tournament. So maybe you want, maybe you would like to reach out to him and have him on the show about uh, his experience about because the umpires, you know, and him being right. the head umpire in NBA, he was definitely impressed with what we did. Yeah, yeah. I, from a player standpoint, I could tell you it was a great experience. Um, uh, the, it felt like a real beat ball tournament. Um, it, uh, it felt safe. I never crossed paths with any other team other than the one that we were playing. Um, and if we crossed paths, it was in, you know, with the mask on or with our distance, right. but no other, other, other than the, you know, like, like Booker said, 
not everybody was uh, in the same area at the same time. And that's, that's very, you know, that's, that was very smart um, right. because it kept other teams from mingling and stuff. So, um, you know, as a player, I felt safe uh, with the way everything was distanced out and they're wiping stuff down and, and then everything else is on me, keeping my, you know, wearing my mask and, and keeping myself clean. So it, it was, a, uh, in my opinion, it was a great success. It showed that we can um, safely uh, – do something um you guys can't say that you had positive cases i'm sorry all right go ahead i'm sorry go ahead i was just uh, you can't say like it was a hundred percent success it you had positive cases we don't know what spiraled out from those two positive cases though but it was a good success outside of those two covid if, it, if, it's, if it's only two people and they were around a bunch of other people and nobody else got it then that's a success in my book um, that means they, people. That means people were keeping, you know, trying to be as safe as possible. Because just just imagine if people were just kind of nonchalant about everything, it, would, it could have been a lot worse. Um, uh, so, and I mean, that's just how. I mean, it is what it is, man. I yeah. mean, no, and, 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 and from the beginning, I've never been on an attack on how it was organized. I, I, sure. I look, Darnell's been throwing this tournament for 20 years. And even though this was totally different as far as the circumstances, I had no doubt. And I think Jared's a good dude. I think Jared's responsible. I think the people who were involved made sure. the best effort. I, this isn't about the, the, how it was thrown a, a, on any sure. level. Um, if it, if it was about anything, it's how it was handled once the two positive uh, cases came up. Um, that, right. That's been my biggest issue. I, right. I, believe I, you, I believe you did everything you could to throw a responsible tournament going into it, Darnell. I have no and doubt I'm just about saying that. With, and I'm just saying with the – I, uh, I mean, you, you guys may agree to disagree on how the, the two positive cases were handled, but we as a uh, – you know, Jared and I – as organizers, and we definitely uh, we put it out to the eight teams that were in the tournament. So, like, yeah, we did not totally ignore right. that. Yeah, we yeah. Totally no, and I'm, I'm there, happy about that. And, and we totally told them what they need to be doing. And then also, it just, just, I mean, I know, so, and I understand, I, I like doing devil's advocate with, with, with them and with you sometimes <laughs> or whatever, but, but also in the sense that just to point out that again just want to make it quite clear that we did not push this tournament meaning the indy thunder did not push this tournament to let that people know that we still were the best team out there there's no there was no ego here i don't I mean, <laughs> yeah, everybody I don't has I, ego I, but I doubt that. eight teams called us eight teams eight to ten teams called us and asked, we would like to play beatball. We're starved for this. Can you make it happen? It was no like, okay, the Indy Thunder is pushing right away to have a tournament to show that we still we still can do whatever we need to do. You know, everybody had, you know, nobody really practiced that much. Everything was optional, but there was no ego here. That's the, I'm saying that point out as the director. And as hey, the, hey, the, hey, the hey if you were still that – Hey, if you were still that Indianapolis team that we shut out back, I think, in 2003 yeah. or four, yeah. or whatever it was, no I don't no think you out. would have been holding this tournament, okay? <laughs> there, there, there's never, there was no set out. That was your imagination because I've never been shut out. I don't know where you got that from. Yeah, Darnell won't, Darnell won't admit to the shutout set out. Uh, there, 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 was, there was a two-to-one game where we only scored he, one he, run against the Dallas. He's in completely denial one. about ever having been shut out. There was no – my team, the Indy Thunder, has never been bageled before, ever. <laughs> he ever. thinks I made up the nickname "shut out" because he struck out a side. Maybe, like, maybe you thought, maybe you thought like, "shut up" because I talked. <laughs> maybe you thought, maybe, maybe "shut up" or "shut out," but maybe, maybe that's what you were thinking. The Thunder has never been shut out in his twenty-year history of playing beat, competitive beat baseball. Now we've that got held to one. We got, we got <laughs> held to one run by the West Coast Dogs, and they beat us two to one, and that was epic. But that was the no, way. That was, that, that was a great game. That's when Seth uh, gave Greg the nickname Ground Ball Greg. <laughs> sure. but yeah, we, so served no, but, up, but, we served uh, up so many ground uh, balls. You guys uh, Oh, we lost Seth right when he was in a rant. Well, that means that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love you guys. 
both, that's but I appreciate that we agree to we agree to disagree. Come to a happy medium. Respect mm -hmm. everybody's opinion. Everybody's healthy and and great. Yeah, you know. I I appreciate that we had a uh, you know good responsible good conversation. conversation. I never wanted yeah. this to be. Uh, I I hate the division that's been going on, not just in our league but in our country. So I'm I'm not trying to cause more division. I wanted to have a healthy conversation. I feel like you guys gave that. I appreciate it. I I'm I'm kind of torn still on this edge tournament. Look, I I've gotten to, I've been getting to know some of the edge players. I I like every single one of them that. I've been getting to know uh, Frank Porter from the edge is kind enough to help me with this show throwing the music in for me I, I, I'm more torn about their tournament oh and, and the other thing what they're doing the hitters and heroes I love the theme of that I love I love the thoughtfulness yeah, yeah. of that all that stuff is great I am 100% behind all of that in normal conditions I'm gonna have a hard time <laughs> Uh, dive, diving into that tournament as it comes out. So I'm, I'm not going to make a commitment one way or the other on, on what I'll do. I've, I'll just admit I mean, I'm the, torn. The, Go ahead, Dave. The, the, the Jets won't be there, so it's not going to be exciting. So don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, jet life. All right. Well, I, <laughs> I appreciate you all coming on very much, taking time out to do this. And we lost somebody, according to my computer. I think Seth popped out. But I appreciate you guys taking the 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 time to do this. No that Seth just popped yeah, back thanks, in. <laughs> my 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 pleasure. Yeah, Seth, it said you popped out and then I you guess popped back in. Yeah, I hear you. You hear me? All uh, right. Yeah, I had to like <laughs> I had to get out. Hold on. What? Darnell. Darnell. What? What? Yeah. What? yeah. What's up? Uh, I was saying you guys were not playing competitive baseball back there. Uh, no. We were always in the top ten out of out of the uh, out of one twelve. Year we, <laughs> no, no, one year, one year. I mean, since, since we've been playing beat baseball, just one year, the Indy Thunder was not in the top ten. That was the year after twenty eleven. We were not in the top. I mean, the year after twenty ten, we weren't in the top ten. But besides that, we were always in the top ten. Just to give you some stats, and then after twenty fifteen, then the rest is history. So we were, we were always a top. We were always a top ten team, except after 2010. That's why that year we finished 12th in 2011. But ever since then, we were always a top ten team. This is uh, the second time that I've gotten through to the end of a show and thought, "I'm proud of Seth. He didn't take any headshots." And then, bam, here he comes. <laughs> and, I, and, and I gave one right back to him. Uh. Wow. All right, fellas. Uh, uh, again, uh, okay, I, I very much appreciate your time. Thanks Thank you. for coming on. Doing right, this. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate I hope thanks, you Neil. guys appreciate stay you. healthy. I'm certainly not hoping for more cases. I hope everybody is healthy and stay. Be smart. Make yeah. good decisions and uh, be considerate of the people around you. Right, D. Smith? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's exactly uh, right. The golden rule, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, and that's what we did here at the Indy Thunder Invitational Tournament. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that's true. We have no doubt, Darnell. We know we know we were going to put on a good tournament, Darnell. Nothing but the best. No. Drive for five, love. Darnell. Drive for five. That's Always next love. year. We hope we'll see what happens. Always love yeah. when, Zoom, when Zoom does. Uh, Seth, you didn't hear, but every once in a while, Zoom does something to somebody's voice. It sounds like they're like. It's that, to me, it always sounds like uh, in Star Wars when they're fighting with the lightsabers. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so halfway through your statement, you start sounding like a lightsaber. <laughs> all right, if all of you could do me a favor on the count of three and tell Aunt Cindy good night. One, two, three. Good night, Aunt Cindy. Good night, Aunt Cindy.